buenas tardes, buenas noches, donde quiera que se encuentren, bienvenidos a Diagnóstico Social. El día de hoy tenemos una, eh, un diálogo muy interesante con uno de los representantes de Fruit Heaven, una organización que está trabajando desde Hualaquiza, en el Ecuador, en la parte oriental del país. Eh, hemos tratado de investigar un poquito sobre ellos, ya que su proyecto, eh, que se llama en español... Fruta del Paraíso es muy interesante, es algo muy, muy innovador, muy dinámico y por ello hemos invitado a uno de sus representantes para tener este diálogo por Zoom. Así que, bueno, va a ser la entrevista en inglés, así que vamos a también tra traducir un poco de, de aquello. Así que, welcome Boris to our show, to Diagnóstico Social or Social Diagnosis. How are you? Uh, good, thank you for having me. Great. Nice. Boris, what do you say? Oh uh, yeah, it's very nice to be on the show. Thank you, thank you. We are we are in Quito. We do our program here in Ecuador in Quito. Uh, we talk and discuss with uh, with different uh, kind of people from from around the world and from our country. We we um, discuss in in specific topics that are a little hard to understand to people. Topics that are not um express in 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 uh, in the media in normal media and tv or other kind of spaces to inform inform about about different kind of things scientific stuff financial stuff uh, maybe also we start talking about covid last year so then we just keep going and and we we already have actually i guess like 20 or 30 shows already so where are you from Okay, so I was born in Belarus when I was a baby. My parents moved to Israel, and there I grew up about 10 years. Uh, uh, we lived there, and then they moved to immigration. They, they immigrated to Canada. And, uh, yeah, I lived um, many years growing up there in school, and then I went uh, to community college, like about technology. And then from there I traveled many countries And, uh, eventually and then you came here. here. How old yeah. are you? And now I'm 33. 33. So you are, you are young. Yeah. Tell me, what are you doing in Ecuador, in Guadalquiza? So, yeah, I came here to join Fruit Haven because I found on the internet. Um, for some years, I was uh, eating primarily fruits and I was searching for communities in the world that have this uh, idea where they live together because... Uh, it's kind of strange to most people. They like to eat many things. And uh, I felt kind of uh, different um, that I like to eat fruits and uh, I wanted to connect with other people. So uh, I found this community and I came here first to volunteer, to work in the land, to grow the fruit. Uh, then um, they have also an option to buy land here. And out of any country in the world, in Ecuador, it's much easier for foreigners to buy land. And so I decided that I would also join this community and I bought a land and I planted my fruits. And now I'm in the community area. So we have both communal spaces. So here it's a place that people come to volunteer and to rent the rooms and uh, also uh, an option to buy land and build privately and great, their own great. Uh, farm. What do you know about the country where your uh, community is? What do you know about Ecuador and the situation of the country right now? Uh, yeah, I see that generally the, the reaction uh, to the situation in the world was better. So this, that's why I decided to stay here and I feel safe in this uh, part of Ecuador uh, where people here They're more relaxed, um, re both regarding uh, the situation with the COVID and also just in general. They're uh, friendly people, and here they they don't uh, worry so much about the, the um, disease that you know the all these problems because here there's a natural lifestyle. Even the people that are neighbors here, they're uh, Shuar people. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes they ask, like, oh, what do you think? What's, what's this problem? And, and we say, well, we have a natural lifestyle so we can stay healthy. So they, they listen as well. And now they're planting more fruit trees as well. So, Do you share information with the Shuar community right there? Or um, yeah. they share with you information about how they grow 
or how they, uh, I mean, the existence there. And, and, and do you have discussions, uh, information, channels of communication with them? Yeah, yeah, we're close. We're very much uh, surrounded uh, with them as our neighbors uh, on different sides of, the, of this area. Uh, and they're all throughout, they have reserve land. And uh, yeah, so we're, we also hire them. So they're working for us every day. We have uh, probably around 10 or actually around 15, depending on the time of year, sometimes more, sometimes less. And so, yeah, many of them work for us and others are just neighbors or uh, maybe they sell us fruit or things like that. So, and we exchange as well. So we teach them about fruits that they don't know about and, Uh, they plant it because the climate is very good here, but mostly the local people just eat uh, usual fruits like the plantains, yucca, things like that. But we like special varieties that they don't know about. So now they're starting to grow them. Right. Um, well, we, we heard, we, we actually have this interview right now because uh, we heard some concerns with uh, people in Guadalquiza. Guadalquiza is is the closest big town uh, to your community. And there is people, I mean, citizens, who doesn't know too much about you. They doesn't know what is the work you're doing and what is your purpose there. So what can you tell them about what is fruit heaven, haven or heaven? I'm sorry for my bad English though, but yeah, no problem. what is it? What, what, what are you doing right there? What is the purpose and uh, what is the future for you right there? So yeah, our main purpose, uh, basically, we just want to live in the nature and have like uh, a lot of fruits growing and just producing a lot of fruit, special cultivars, special varieties of fruits that are very interesting, very delicious. We, that's our food. We eat fruits primarily, most of us. Uh, there's a big percentage of people here, like myself and other people that eat maybe 90% just fruit, nothing else, no Uh, animal products, no grains, nothing, you know, just fruit. And no, that's not, milk, uh, not milk, not uh, milk uh, industry or stuff like that, you know? Exactly, yeah, no, no animal product of any kind, no fish, no rice, no, no potato, even some people, they do eat some plants like potatoes and uh, maybe like rice, things like that but we we do not eat grains as well things that are um, i didn't know that you gluten. didn't i didn't know that your community doesn't use uh, i thought that you uh, eat uh grains uh, cereals but you don't do that yeah most people don't uh there's some people where it's difficult for them to eat fruits in the beginning the transition so they they also have some period where they eat some uh things like yeah potatoes or yucca or sweet potato or um, plantain, maybe things like that, that they have more starch. But uh, another percent, I don't know, some maybe half or I don't know how many people, there are different people that their diets, for example, my diet is primarily raw food. So I eat the fruits, they're the best raw food because they digest the easiest. And uh, there's really amazing fruit that we can grow here. And the taste and the nutrition is so high and so great um very high vibration high frequency in this fruit is very alive you know so i don't right. like to cook usually uh, like most days i probably um about 90 maybe one day in one month maybe i might eat some kind of yucca or something like that but very rarely for me Uh, other okay. people, sometimes one day a week or sometimes maybe one time even per day. It depends, maybe two times a week. So, yeah, that's our goal. Our goal is to live on the most amazing fruits that we can grow. in this climate is excellent for growing real high quality, delicious fruits. And that's most been our the focus. Year. Exactly. You don't have cold so winters. Year. You don't have... Uh, exactly. you don't have a season where there is no rain so you can have your fruit every year every time every day in the year right exactly yeah all year long we can grow bananas papayas and then throughout the year there are different seasons for the different kinds of fruits uh and we plant other fruits to to become available in different parts of the year so that all year there's some interesting fruit in season And uh, yeah, there's many varieties and things that grow here that local people don't know, or they just 
um, don't care, I'm not sure, but yeah, so that's one of the goals. And then also having our own uh, land where we own it and we have the title, it's very special in the world. Uh, some countries it's not possible to own land being a foreigner and here it's also possible to have residency uh, so we do the the residency and we buy the land and so those are the main goals to grow the food also vegetables like lettuce tomatoes cucumber things like that great great okay. let's let's go to a commercial to a first break and um, then uh, we return to keep talking about what you're doing right there and um, how is how is it right now with the circumstances we got in the country uh, being in that part of the, of the world and in the, and, and and of this country uh, let's let's have a commercials and then we we come back right segundo bloque de diagnóstico social, estamos conversando con Boris de Fruit Heaven, eh, quienes se encuentran eh, localizados en Gualaquiza. Fruit Heaven es una comunidad autosustentable que, que recibe, que, que, que recoge personas de todo el mundo, voluntarios y también personas que quieren vivir ahí perennemente, que comen prácticamente solo frutas, y frutas que no son cocinadas. Por ejemplo, Boris nos estaba comentando que él eh, eh, prácticamente solo come frutas crudas o, o, o se alimenta de cosas crudas que no son cocinadas. And, um, entonces vamos a seguir con la conversación. So, Boris, you, in how long you've been eating just uh, raw, 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 raw uh, food? How, how, how long you've been doing this? Yeah, for uh, this year, I think it's about six years that uh, when I got the first idea that this is the way to live, to eat primarily fruits. Uh, it was, I six was years. not six years that I started, uh, but I was not a hundred percent and I'm still also not 100%, but it was a transition for the first uh, maybe months, four months, and then another year until I transitioned my body and I was able to really be satisfied from eating only fruit. How, how's your health after this? Yeah, it's excellent. Uh, I've had, uh, after some transition, you know, some being able to really adjust the body because if you're used to a specific diet, the body is already used to eating um, different kinds of food, especially yeah, cooked things and grains and whatever. Uh, I think going to a vegan diet is probably easy enough because there's so many options. And then uh, from there going to fruit, Uh, fruit based up uh, so I was just increasing the amount of fruit that I was eating and then uh, reducing everything else and eventually also doing some juice fast and then it helps with the transition detoxing Great. do you know do you know any other community like like the one you have there uh, through heaven there is something yeah. like that like this yeah. in the part of the world There is, yeah. When I was researching about it on the internet, I was just searching and I found uh, in Costa Rica, there are some communities and also in Hawaii. But this one I found the most interesting. And actually right here, there is already one more community. So the one that originally started in this part and near Gualaquisa, there is one community. It's called Terra Frutis. And yes, I, one, I found it in the internet too before this meeting. The, and uh, I, I felt that even though there is in the cities, in the country, we have in, uh, big struggles. I mean, we are, I don't want to, 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 to translate, to, to, to put you some bad feelings about what is happening in the country. I mean, about the cities, you know, about the poverty or maybe the the lack of work and stuff like that that is happening in this country but because i feel that maybe you don't have that stress that the rest of the citizens has in this country of almost 20 million people but um 
what it concerns me, what it seems to me pretty interesting is that I don't know if you are documenting all the work you're doing right there, because maybe the answers or the information you are re re researching or or getting from your work and uh, maybe could help not just us, not just this country, but also maybe uh, the world. Because I know that you are practicing uh, in the in the um, in the in the in the process of your produce of food. You are um, not using chemicals. You are not uh, using tools that maybe the rest of the of the farmers do. You are doing some kind of different farming. What is what you're doing right there, and what is the difference with it with the rest of the of the world? Yeah, so that's a good point. Uh, we try to live as natural as possible and to grow the food that we can eat because it's the most important thing what we eat is making making us healthy so we we found the methods that are most common is called permaculture it's permaculture, i think they yes. started about i don't know maybe 50 years ago or more some ideas about natural growing and uh it's uh, the differences between the permaculture and how conventional farmers they're using the monoculture which is one type uh, where they'll just have, you know, a plantation of just bananas. Well, we exactly. have a farm and it's very small and we want to grow a lot of fruits. So we don't have space. Yeah, so we do like a polyculture, a, a permaculture where it's permanent and it's got fruit trees and between them there's bananas and between that there's some other trees and other fruits, like just depending the big trees are spaced further. And then between that, there's like smaller ones like the bananas and papayas and things like that. They, they can fill up the space better and they can also have a relationship with each other underground. Um, the mycorrhizal, the different mycelium fungus, and they all live together. So we plant companion plants like the ice cream bean guava or the flamingia, which is another leguminous or Mexican sunflower, which we use for creating a better soil system. Uh, okay. And that way, when we make the soil better in a natural way without using any chemicals, it's much healthier plants. They grow a little bit slower, but they're stronger, they're healthier, the fruit quality is better. Great. How many people live in your community? Right now, uh, so, yeah, the numbers fluctuate. I would have to count, but it's usually between 15 to 20 people. We have different structures. We have about uh, three community areas here that have some structures on them, and there's more going to be built. And then there's about 10 houses that are private houses that are built uh, part of the private lots. And so the people live on their private houses, or some of them live in the community area. Right. Uh, and then there's the community Terra Frutis, where they also have similar project. They have a bigger community area. They also have about, I don't know, they can host about 20 or 30 people. And uh, they also have a festival where they have some people coming from different countries to visit. And When is that? Taste in, in what time? Uh, in January, usually January 17, I think. Yeah, so it just happened right. last month. And uh, so far, it's happened about four years already. So I think next year as well. And they so might do another festival. Right now, it's, you said that right now it's around 20 people in uh, your community right now. How many land do you need with plants, with fruit plants, to give them food? I mean, it's a question I have. Like, how sustain sustainable is uh, your community to show that um, 20 people it's it, they can live with 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 some kind of of, of land. I mean, a number is. It, how do you know that about it? One person, you, Boris. How many yeah. land need to be alive? Uh, from what we understand, I think Peter says, uh, which is one of the founders. Uh, yeah, I know he about said Peter. it's about yeah. He's a he says it's about one acre, one hectare between that if it's managed really well. Uh, we have a lot of land and some of it is good, you know, flat and good soil. Others is steep and, and not such good soil, even though the climate is the same. In some areas, actually, we have different climates. So there's Fruit Haven 3 land, which is higher elevation. 
Um, but right now we're still, um, we still have more work to do to be self-sustainable and really have totally living on our uh, own food. Of course, with cooking, with things like uh, yuca and plantains, we can definitely get there and live on only our food. But if we want to eat uh, a lot of good quality raw fruits, then uh, we have to wait a bit longer for more trees to fruit. It takes some trees between three and, and 10 years. So some of those we already have. Yeah. So the fruits that we get from, uh, I think now this project is about seven years uh, and a lot of fruits have started fruiting, but we're still waiting for others. And then as we didn't know, like in the beginning, they didn't know about the techniques and didn't always have money to maintain the fruit trees. So even if, well, in the best condition, the fruit will give fruits in 10 years, but maybe in the medium condition, it will take longer. So we're still waiting. So your goal right now is to, um, your challenge actually is to be sustainable you are not getting that yet, but you are working in that. How long do, do you think it will take you, how many years more to be sustainable and maybe to be able to have a community that can grow and also be safe in health? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think that um, uh, we're still planting things. So even uh, these we're planting things, that means that it, it's still another three to 10 years, depending on the fruit tree if it's maintained well. So I think every year we have more and more and yeah, basically within the next like five years, we should start seeing like. Right. Tenemos un poquito de, Boris, do you hear me? Mm. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Signal is gone, so maybe um, I'm going to do another another meeting if we if you can get in. So um, I'm gonna wait five seconds more, right? And then and then I want to make another meeting. Hey, you come back. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. We're back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, you were saying you were saying that um, you still going. I mean, growing. I mean, uh, are um, planting, and it's a con continuous process. And uh, yes, no, exactly when when to end, but you still have a lot of work to do. Yeah. So we still have lots of new land that we're buying and planting more. And every year the fruit improves and gets better. So we have some fruit trees that are already older, but we're still planting more. And then the old fruit trees, we notice that their quality of fruit improves as they become older, as they're mature. So maybe in the first five to 10 years of the tree's life, it can start producing, but maybe in the 10, 20, 30 years, then it's going to be even better. It depends on the tree. Some trees, I mean, papayas, they can only live for maybe about five or 10 years if they're really lucky so for papaya it's different but for uh jackfruit and durian and black sapote and some other interesting like mami sapote things avocados like you know in the world avocados. they yeah. are they are really popular right now in the world right oh yeah they're, they've been popular for a long time yeah we have i mean bananas are very fast to mature they can fruit in one year basically one and do you half. know that this is the country that uh it's known and famously in the world because it's the first producer of, of bananas and plantains in the world. You, do you know about it? Yeah, I think it's in the top uh, three or Yeah, it's right? the first. Then uh, Number one. in the coast, all this in the coast of the country, then uh, it was the first producer of cacao, I mean, to make chocolate. One of oh, the yeah. first is also one of the, the big ones too, but... Um, 
I come. I came from a family who, who has uh, experience. I mean, uh, we we got uh, farms. My my grandfather, my father has farms in the coast of Bananas, actually, yeah. for many years. Right now, right now, nobody does the same thing anymore. But I came from that kind of people, and um, uh, we were farmers. But what I'm saying, what I want to tell you is. We had really we have to face a lot of problems with the with the bugs with the eel in France because we just uh, grow one thing and you know after a while there always come an eel a illness for the plants and uh, we have to use a lot of chemicals and there is a lot of problems about it now after many years we know that that causes cancers and stuff eels illness to the people and to the workers that uh, work, that manipulate the, 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 the chemicals though, but how is for you that thing? Before we go into the commercial, how, how do you face uh, the illness of the plants? If you have, you face that kind of problems, challenges, and you are using some chemicals or you actually doesn't do any kind of industrial uh, product, products to, to, to your growth? Well, we noticed so uh, yeah, sometimes there are some bugs that can attack the plant or the fruit. So we have a few different strategies. Um, mainly, we improve the soil as much as we can, and that helps the plant become stronger. Uh, and then if there's still problems, we can try natural solutions. So for example, there is a special formula that the government of Ecuador gives. It's uh, chili, garlic, so it's like ají, jengibre, and like all yes. kinds of things that are very strong and we spray that. So it's a natural solution that's made from plants and we spray it on the fruit and it tends to help. And then we also look at other options and see, if, well, if one type of fruit doesn't produce so well in this climate, like there's actually a problem here with coconuts. So we don't really plant so many and also mangoes, they don't produce so, so much. So then we focus on fruits that will give better uh, quantity and quality. So, for example, jackfruit, which is not very popular in Ecuador, maybe you've heard of it. Sometimes they call it yaca. Um, but yeah, maybe you can check for a picture of it you can show or something. And um, actually, I have one I can show. Mm, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I knew the plant from uh, from US. Um, jackfruit, it's, it's really popular in Asia. Yeah, it's huge. I know. That's and that's so, yeah, that's not from our land, but that's from some other farm. But we want to produce a lot of these. So we have a lot of, well, a couple of trees and there's, uh, Terra Frutis has got a lot of trees and they produce really well, so. Right, right, right. So, um, well, we are going to the second uh, block, finishing, and we're going to a commercial right now. Bienvenidos al tercer y último bloque de diagnóstico social. El día de hoy estamos hablando con los chicos de Fruit Heaven. Tenemos a Boris que nos está dando información, nos está conversando, comentando cómo es el trabajo de la comunidad que ellos están eh, manejando ya varios años, eh, siete años exactamente en el Ecuador. Han comprado tierras, han creado sus granjas, y están aprendiendo y están descubriendo. Entonces queremos saber un poco más sobre eso en este momento. So, uh, Boris, you are doing science where you are right now. Um, as a as a investigator, as as the one that I am, and um, I like to to discover new things to put in books or maybe in documentaries or maybe in my work or tell people about something new. That's something that I really like. And I found I hearing you and I saw the the work you have done in internet with documentaries and interviews and stuff like that and. And I really believe that you have a lot of new information. I, you got a lot of things that you are finding by yourself. I mean, working in progress. So are you documentary in this? Are you having, do, do you have uh, some kind of uh, uh, files about this? Do you think about, uh, I don't know, to, to publish something in the future? How is the thing? What, what, 
is uh, Peter says about it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, right now we're mostly following advice that actually we get from other people. And then if we find some new things, uh, mainly on YouTube, we discover some things and there's different forums on the internet where people that uh, are into permaculture and natural growing. So there's actually a community or different communities even on the internet. Uh, and we share, exchange the information. And if we discover some new ideas, then yeah, we will share it and um, I don't think we have enough for making a book necessarily, but we have published, um, I could also look at that as well, is um, uh, not published really, but more just printed uh, for showing people. For example, when people come here to visit, uh, we show them what kind of fruits we have. We also have it a digital format, a PDF, so they can see what can be grown in this climate and what's the fruits look like in photos because maybe it's not always in season or whatever maybe it's not even uh fruiting yet so we'll know in the future what was what was the taste like of this fruit and uh how does it like to grow because many people that come here they buy the land and then they want to know uh what can they grow how can they plant it how can they maintain this and also we have uh, the workers that we hire the local people so we provide jobs for them and then they make our job easier. Like we want to plant it and they can help us. They're nice and strong people. They're very friendly and they're happy to earn money. And they've been growing up here all their life. So they, they already used to walking around in the jungle. You also, also you have to get some food from, from outside of your community, right? Yes, we buy fruits from the markets, local people. And that's also where it becomes interesting because we're happy that they're going to be uh, growing this fruit. So we give them seeds and we also sell plants. We have plants sometimes uh, that they might be purchasing because we have a small nursery, Vivero. <laughs> the, they like the, the idea of having other fruits because then that can give them also more income. They can sell this fruit or they can consume it themselves and, and have a good way of sustaining nutrition because Normally, if they primarily eat things like yucca and plantain, it might have a uh, lack of some minerals and vitamins where a fruit like this, it's very sustaining. It has a lot of liquid and vitamins and minerals and, <laughs> and it has a lot of calories. And so it's much healthier to eat this than uh, it's huge. yucca and and he's yes. huge and this is a small one <laughs> there, are, there are better bigger ones even so exactly what how is your relationship with the community with the local uh, leaders with the police and with the politicals with the i mean politicians with the major did you have any problems uh, do you have any concerns or maybe your relationship with them it's really nice it's really good there there is no any problem right now you never had any any complication in, in in your community with the locals well, how is it going yeah the local people well in terms of the local people that live here um like we're all uh, good neighbors and friends with them so we exchange uh work and uh, plants and knowledge and we learn from them as well because there's a lot of things we don't know about plants coming from uh, many different countries people didn't uh, didn't know about them uh, you, you should have a, a class of spanish then therefore for your your we have like english lessons and spanish lessons for us and english lessons for them and so we have exchanges yeah and um in terms of politicians uh no we don't really get involved um yeah i guess uh we try to i think peter's uh working on some stuff regarding like the regulations and things that were happening so he had some uh things that he was gonna do with the, some lawyers but uh, generally we just uh use the cities we only go there for um for some legal documentation regarding uh notary like buying land purchase and things like that um otherwise yeah it's just buying construction materials and buying fruits that's their main uh use of the cities we're about uh 40 minutes or so from uh, Guadalquiza, mm. and we're also close to el pangi is about 20 minutes Pangis, yes the electricity you have do you produce it or are you 
you have uh, connections with the lo local electricity system. How how is the thing with the water and the electricity? Are you? I saw I saw in the documentary that maybe some um, tourists, some people that lives in your in your community for a while, actually women, they feel not comfortable at the beginning. And uh, I I'm concerned if it's just because of the bugs, or mm -hmm. other, or it's just there is because there is no I mean uh, water I mean um, safe water or maybe electricity uh, how is it yeah so the power the electricity we get for this community house Fruit Haven one where I am now is from the grid so the local people here they have a company that comes through and provides electricity uh, uh, near the river so river Big Z Zamora here um but uh, for other houses they're further there's a lot of private houses and uh, all of them they're getting the uh, solar panels and that's been a nice way to generate electricity in a more sustainable way yes uh, in terms of the water we get all our water there's a lot of rain in this area and we have some streams and so we have water intake that comes from a clean stream and yeah, of yeah. course there's The waterfalls that's a great way to get a shower that's you got the better water in the world i mean i i, I should i sh i'm sure that the mo the most expensive water i can get in a market right now is not enough good as the one that you are taking in that water anytime you want it <laughs> i believe yeah. probably So it's, it's, it's amazing. Sustainable. It doesn't use any power. So we just have it from the gravity. It comes and we have enough pressure to put into the pool because it goes a few hundred, maybe 200 meters or so up high. Or actually, no, less than that, maybe 100 meters, something like that. Really, really. Well, there's a lot of technology that can be used right now to have uh, help in, in communities like yours. I mean, to produce electricity and stuff like that. More, more more efficient and more sustainable ways and technology. So um, tell me a little bit about your personal achievements in, in this kind of living. I mean, uh, you are not missing your family. You don't miss in the way of the city is, the huge cities. I know that you come from Belarus and in different kind of parts of the world where you know there is a lot of technology, a lot of uh, big cities. Are you, ha are, you, are you having what you dream? Yeah, I think uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the technology here. Like I have the internet. It, it's going to become fiber optic in the next maybe month or so. For now, we have like a dish and I'm doing the live stream. I'm able to call my parents every weekend on my phone or on the computer, whatever. Uh, and yeah, I have a computer that's new that recently some people came and brought so it's easy for us to get electronics from uh guadalquiza or alpangi uh if we can get some stuff from other countries it's better uh usually the prices are better but i think in the future ecuador will lower their taxes so we'll have better quality things here too um in terms of yeah living i just like to be in the nature yeah it's much more peaceful So uh, I used to live yeah, in kind of suburban area near the big city in Toronto. Um, and yeah, and then when I started traveling, I saw that uh, I'm more drawn to going out to the countryside and visiting more nature places. I visited like many countries, maybe about 20 countries. And in the cities, it's always very polluted and stressful. And I would only spend as many time. Dangerous as well. That's true. But it's also bad for, you know, breathing and the, the pollution and the noise. And so I always wanted to go to the further to like beaches or some places that are more relaxed and, and nice. So, so um, in your community, there is not need for a, for a psychologist or for a psychiatrist. I mean, you don't have a, maybe your kind of life is a therapy it's not um, what we need right now in the in the cities or in the countries where there is a lot of problems on cities and stuff happening around and uh, our kind of life is really fast we cannot um, really enjoy why, why we are just working and working and working right so um what 
what do you what you can tell to the people in Ecuador to know that your your uh, your community maybe you have a lot of uh, good uh, good publicity in in different parts of the world maybe there is people that send you letters from every from different parts of the world but I think maybe you can't um, have the chance to show I mean to invite to to have the invitation for for people from from locals I mean not maybe from from Guadalquiza, but from Quito from Guayaquil people that can be in your in your place for about 15 days or a month or maybe more or longer periods of time but what, what do you what would you offer to the Ecuadorians that wish to have the experience you have what do you what they can get and how they can get it Um, yeah, well, we're not set up exactly like a tourism place. We try to be more for people that are interested in this lifestyle because there, I think there's already many places that are similar. But uh, in general, if someone is interested in raw food and vegan, especially in like detoxing and living in a healthy lifestyle in nature, uh, even more interesting yeah, if they want to live with us permanently, if they want to buy land. Uh, for short visits, if they want, they can come and check out the area, like the waterfalls we have. And um, what else do we have here? We, well, there's some caves in the area. We can visit some nature places. Of course, we can teach if they want to grow things on how, how Arctic someone, works for permaculture. I'm sorry. So, someone can be there for a day, for three days, for a week, or, or they... Actually, to be in the whole experience, they should be at least three months to be living with you in, in, the, in the community. How? In general, we prefer long-term visits, but yeah, if somebody wants to come for a short time, they can visit us as well. Uh, but generally, we uh, look for people who are like long-term members because we don't have like a lot of rooms at this point. So we want to reserve those for people that are wanting to live. Uh, Longer period of maybe, time. Yeah. Especially buying land. In the future, we probably will have more accommodation and we can have maybe like a hostel or some some camping options. We also have that if people are interested to like do more camping and like that kind of stuff. But in this area, there's a lot of uh, tourism places as well. There's many waterfalls. And so I definitely recommend. And so if they already come in this area, then definitely come visit us. And especially if they're interested to learn about eating raw food or even just vegan, vegan in a more clean way. So we don't use, for example, oil or bread, things like that. So even though those are plants, but we choose not to eat those because of the effects that they have on the body. So things like oil and, and uh, wheat as well, the gluten is, is uh, known to cause you know, problems with the body. What about the wine and the alcohol? You, you, don't, you don't use that? Uh, Generally, we prefer to stay more clean lifestyle, but once in a while, if somebody wants, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a fruit, but it's just fermented. So it has yes. uh, some negative effects because of the alcohol parts, but like yeah. to me, to me, the, the wine and the beer is something uh, that I use a lot, <laughs> a lot, uh, some beer when I when it's caught or, or a cup of wine when I'm working. And um, well, what is the future for you guys? Um, how do you see uh, the work and, and the things that you are, I mean, uh, achieve? And what do you think it's going to be in the next few years? Do you think it's sustainable? Do you think you, you will keep being in there? You're not going to live to, to Canada. You know, you're not going to return. Peter is not going to go back to, to I, I believe he's from Washington State, I guess. Some, I don't remember well. Uh, Connecticut, I think, Connecticut. But yeah, they're... Connecticut, yeah, yeah. He's from, he is, yeah, he's from the north of New Jersey. But exactly, what, what do you see? How do you see the future for you? Yeah, I think the future here is that we're going to keep expanding, getting more people that will buy the lands and to build their food forests. And uh, yeah, others that live together with us in the community. And, oh, yeah, you mentioned about psychiatrists or psychologists or something where, yeah, we don't uh, need that in order to relax. It's very easy to find peace here. But it's also interesting living in community. Uh, we're exploring 
different ways, like we're having community meetings and I find very useful the nonviolent communication, which is a special system of expressing needs and feelings in a, in a way that's peaceful and kind of uh, empathy, like to, to understand. In seven because, years, uh, you didn't have that, those problems, struggles between people in, the, in your community. You don't, yeah, you don't face there is always there's always some kind of uh, conflicts and things, but usually we find a way to resolve them. You know, everyone has different ideas about uh, what is uh, clean, what is good, you know, and, and living in the same place for a long time, we're going to have different uh, standards and different ideas of uh, how things should be. And so yeah, it's been very interesting to see, but then other people, they just live on their personal lots and, and they just decide everything on their house. And then sometimes they might visit the community. We'll have some events, activities, like people are doing different exercise, martial arts, things like that. And then we have workshops teaching how to do the uh, culture and how to plant fruit trees and maintain them and uh, the space and all the all kinds of stuff, the soil, how to maintain. Great, yeah. great. Great. Thank you, Boris, for your time. Thank you for teaching us how is the life in uh, Food Haven. We, we wish uh, that, that you guys have a, a great future, that uh, you can achieve all the challenges. I mean, the goals you, 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 you decide to, to put in your life. Um, I welcome you as Ecuadorian also that um, you are part of this country and right now. I hope that uh, you can... Um, and the way you live in, you can teach the rest of the country also that there is options to live and to have a sustainable living, you know. And uh, one, uh, one last question I have uh, in mind that I wish to ask you. Is there in your community a space for families or everybody is single? Because I, I believe you don't have children in between you. Uh, well, we had some families visiting at some time. Yeah, there, uh, there's one house that was built with a child. And then uh, that family, they went back to the U.S. and they sold it to another family uh, that also has uh, given birth there in that house. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, we had the children. Uh, I think at this time, having a smaller amount of people, it's difficult for people with children. So they also left at this time. Uh, and the, they put up that house for sale. But uh, I, what I think is that maybe it will require some families right away, maybe two or three to come in the same time, because uh, when there is one family with a child, uh, it, it kind of puts the rest, you know, the, it's difficult for other people to relate to them. But if there's many at once and then they can have like a little kindergarten and maybe like a little school, you know, then it will become like our own uh, family oriented. But yeah, definitely we want that. We're looking forward to have more of that because, yeah, kind of like uh, fruit trees are making, they're uh, birthing more fruit trees. And so we want to <laughs> have more have the chance. Uh, people here as well. Great, great. It's, it's great to hear that. Well, I hope that uh, this information helps uh, to, to, to connect also with, with the colleges, with the universities, uh, because maybe there could be between um, of you community and with the with the with the community of, of, of the colleges and the universities in the country, because they they can learn from you and, and you can receive help from them too. I mean, I believe there are there are many things that uh, they, they can be i mean get better working together as like in the area of the producing electricity or the uh, the use or the or the process of the use of water or stuff like that maybe there are many things that can be work and can be done hope i hope i hope that the the, the, the universities that will watch this will learn a lot about it and uh, i believe that there there's many, many people that work hard in this country to, to help to, um, to save the animals. I mean, the, 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 the rainforest and the animals in, in the area. So I believe that if, if we have a better uh, practice in, uh, in the process of producing food, maybe that land will be better for them, for the, for the local animals that, um, I don't know if you saw one, <laughs> if you saw monkeys or any, any kind of 
uh, animal from the area, you know. But um, I think I think you can live in the way you're living there. Maybe there won't be any problem with them, right? Yeah, definitely. We're we like to see there's lots of different kinds of animals and insects and birds and. Uh, I haven't seen a monkey, but when I was visiting some place far away uh, up in the mountain here, the worker said he saw it and he told me, oh, look, I didn't see it at that time. So they do exist in this area. Uh, there's just not many of them. And we're kind of happy that we don't have to deal with them because probably they would want to eat our fruits. So Yeah, being you there, like the, the angels, I believe, they will keep moving and seeing that you are friendly. Maybe they are in the mountains because, you know, many people for centuries trying to eat them. So That's right, yeah. Left. I hope they return. So thank you so much for this time. And uh, I, I and think I we- agree. It's very interesting to see some universities that can help us. And I think in the future, we would have a lot more research and kind of like our own maybe university where we learn about Fine. the best way to fruits and yeah to grow them and eat them and <laughs> great great i will i will send this 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 program when it will be um uh, ready to you guys i hope you can watch it and um uh, and thank you so much for your time boris oh, and if you want yeah you can include the links like fruit haven yes yes you have to send us i mean in in my whatsapp okay. we have connection right now send me all the information you want to put in the video okay, so i will I will tell the, the, the editors to, so to, to put it too. So, so we will be glad to do it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Great.